So by way of background, PSMA is a cell surface antigen that's present on almost all, but not all uh, prostate cancer tumors uh, with expression going up uh, with increased grade, stage, and, with, um, and, and following hormonal therapy. Uh, traditionally or historically, PSMA was targeted with antibodies, but more recently, uh, small molecules such as PSMA 617 have been used. There are some differences, however, between the antibodies and the small molecules, mostly uh, because of differences in kinetics and biodistribution. Those look like they matter when we're looking at it as a therapeutic target. Uh, and I'll refer you to Niaz et al., um, which is available online at a, as a podium presentation at the AUA 2020 uh, uh, virtual meeting, um, where there's fairly clear differences that make sense in terms of toxicity based on the biodistribution. So the antibodies circulate uh, through uh, the bone marrow for days or, or longer, and nonspecific radiation can, can lead to mild suppression. The small molecules uh, don't circulate for so long, so jelly don't have so much in the way of, of mild suppression, but they do land in areas of PSM expression that are inaccessible to the large antibodies. And clinically, what we see is a little bit more uh, xerostomy or dry mouth, um, as well as nausea because of expression on the brush border of the small intestine. Theoretically, there's a, a risk of uh, renal failure, but luckily we haven't seen that too much clinically. Uh, but using that background, uh, we went into the clinic uh, with a potent alpha emitter. So alpha emitters are thousand-fold um, higher energy per uh, radionuclide than betas, although they have a shorter path length. Uh, but because we wanted to avoid the salivary gland, uh, we went in with an antibody. Uh, so we performed a, a phase one dose escalation study of the alpha emitter 225 actinium um, labeled on the monoclonal antibody GA591 uh, and performed a phase one dose escalation study. So the patients enrolled had progressive metastatic castration resistance to prostate cancer. They had at least one prior modern uh, potent AR pathway inhibitor. Uh, they were required to have either prior chemotherapy or be ineligible for chemotherapy or refuse chemotherapy. Uh, they were allowed to have prior radium-223 or uh, and or PSMA-targeted beta emitters, such as lutetium-177 PSMA, um, and they were required to have adequate organ function. Um, as at screening, a standard cross-sectional imaging CT or MRI plus bone scan was performed, as well as PSMA PET, but the PSMA PET was not used for entry criteria in terms of selection. So regardless of what the PSMA PET showed, they were eligible to be treated. Uh, the primary endpoint was defining the dose limit toxicity uh, and coming up with an MTD or recommended phase two dose as uh, typical as part of a dose escalation study. Uh, at the end of the day, we enrolled 22 men in seven different dose escalation cohorts. Um, most of the men uh, had intermediate or poor CLDB prognostic risk group. Most had two or more potent AR pathway inhibitors. Most had prior chemotherapy, and most had prior lutetium PSMA. In terms of the primary endpoint, uh, one in six men in court six had a DLT, uh, actually two DLTs, which was grade four thrombocytopenia and anemia. However, zero out of the six in the, the, the highest court, uh, dose level seven, had a DLT. Uh, so therefore, we declared that the study did not uh, achieve maximal tolerated dose, and we declared the recommended phase two dose uh, in a single dose of 93.3 kilobecquerel per kilogram. Uh, aside from the single patient that happened to have a DLT, no one else had any grade three or four toxicity aside from one additional subject that had grade three anemia that was, that was transient. Everything else uh, in terms of toxicity was restricted to grade one and grade two. So this is primarily a study to look at safety and dosing, uh, but we did take a preliminary look at efficacy and despite the heavily pretreated population, despite not selecting for uh, PSMA, and despite the majority having prior PSMA targeted lutetium, 
the majority did have post-treatment PSA decline with approximately 40% having at least a 50% PSA decline. Um, circulating tumor cell count by the cell search platform uh, was also controlled in the majority of patients. And in a preliminary look at patient reported outcomes by the uh, brief pain inventory and FACP, uh, the majority had favorable patient report outcomes. Now, in our poster, you can see a couple of examples uh, of patients um, at their, looking at their PSMA pets, and you can, they happen to have responses, um, which you can see there. Uh, but importantly, in terms of what we've observed and heard from those that have anecdotally delivered uh, alpha emitters via the small molecules, where there's dose-limiting xerostomia, and you can see on subsequent imaging uh, that their salivarians disappear, uh, what we show uh, in the examples on the poster um, are uh, decreases in PSMA, uh, PSA, circling tumor cells, et cetera, but also no difference in subsequent uptake of PSMA on PSMA PET. Uh, we also saw very few um, events of xerostomia. In fact, only one patient that did not have prior lutetium PSMA um, had grade one xerostomia. Um, so, uh, in conclusion, overall, uh, in terms of this presentation, uh, actinium-225 radio label GF501 is well tolerated. Uh, there was no MTD achieved, so we, we have the recommended phase two dose of 93.3 kilobecquerel per kilograms, and there's preliminary evidence of efficacy in this heavily pretreated uh, patient population. So the next steps in, in terms of this particular drug is we, uh, this particular study is completing um, assignment two stage uh, expansion cohort uh, at two centers, uh, and additional studies looking at multiple doses as well as combinations are planned for later this year.